Um, I'm not going to ramble on too much about things without drawing because I know you guys probably are like, stop talking, start drawing. But I just want to give a quick mention of the other artists that went with me. I think if you go check out my latest Instagram post about Gen Con, on the third picture, I have a photo with all the artists that were kind of not only just I was friends with, but it's like we don't get to see each other that often. And Gen Con's like a giant family reunion. And it was so wonderful seeing a lot of familiar faces, making friends with new faces, and then having this just collaborative, I don't know, positive energy. And it was infectious. And you get so, I don't, what's a good word? I don't want to say warm, but I feel like that's not a good adjective. But I just felt so at home. That's a good word. I felt at peace with the people around me. And it was just a very, very enjoyable experience being at Gen Con. It's my first time. And... I will say it's my favorite convention of the year. So if any of you guys are interested in not only a high caliber level of art alongside like a really fun time, this is like the perfect marriage and merging of the two. And there's one little thing I want to show you guys that was very unexpected. I actually won an award. I got a uh, juror's choice. And this is something that was interesting because Key won it last year. And for those of you who don't know, Gawky is my roommate. She's my little sister. And she won it last year. And it was really cool then for me to come for my first time and win it. Considering we got yelled at, or me and my assistant got yelled at like three times for my booth. It was like the eight foot poles that I had behind me were too tall. And then my booth kind of tipped over at one point a little bit. And then setting up on day one, we were running late. So they like brought out an extra booth so we could put our stuff on it. Uh, or table so we could put our stuff on it. So that we weren't uh, clogging the aisle. So I was like, you know... I probably won't win it. Oh, and I wasn't even using their pro mats uh, p panels behind me. Like there's like these gray walls that people put their art on, but I came like a <laughs> an a hole and just like put my poles up right in front of them and didn't even use them. So I was like, you know what? I probably aren't. I won't be eligible, but I am having such a blast. It doesn't care. So to receive this art on top of that or this award, it was like literally the cherry on top of an amazing, amazing cake already. So for me, I feel like I didn't. I don't know. I feel kind of overwhelmed. The whole experience was overwhelming in a very good way. So this was wonderful. I'll just put it, I'll put it back here for now. Whew. And awards should never be a reflection of, okay, I've done enough. It should be a reflection of, wow, I've, I'm being recognized for my work. I got to keep going. So whenever I think of awards now, I think of it as a nice like pat on the back, but also a little bit of a push. So it's like, yeah, you're doing great, and like keep going. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to see it as. Do, do, do. Okay. And I think there was one more thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Nope. Oh, Key, how Hello. are you doing? What you working on? Dude? You want to come in the, the shot? No, I look like trash. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I look like? I'm going to do, so I'm going to, I want to do a creature based on Kingdom Death, but I kind of want, oh, leave it, oh yeah, my beautiful onion. <laughs> Show them your onion. I think my roommates think it's really weird that I'm letting this, like, onion it's decompose. It's fermenting. Mm-hmm, isn't it beautiful? I want to draw it. Look at all this good texture. But anyways, this is Key. If you guys don't know who Gawky is, she's an amazing artist as well. She's running a Kickstarter actually right now, and it was 100% completed in how many days? Uh, three or four? Three or four. Oh, I'm so cold. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Go check it out, though. Still fund it. It's a great book. It's going to be like 150 pages of just pure color digital artwork. And Key's oh. amazing. <laughs> I have a lot to do. <laughs> so I want to start it off with just the idea of like a pole and this praying mantis type creature behind ah. it. But I want to have 20 arms. Like, that's the main goal is okay. to have a drawing with 20 arms. And then yeah, wherever it goes after, I'll see. Wait. Does Key have a Twitch or Instagram? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's dog got Key for Instagram. Yes, that's my Instagram. Oh, Tijal already linked you. Perfect. Oh, Tijal. <laughs> wow. Do you want to say any words about Gen Con and how you felt about it? It was wonderful. And that was when it got funded. And I met so many nice people. <laughs> and if you're here, I'm glad I met you. And Gen Con. And that's what I keep saying, too. I think it is my favorite show of the year now. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. Was there something you needed, or was it 
just I'm doing I'm down here to do my laundry. Oh. I just wanted to <laughs> come by and say hi. Okay, bye. Bye, Key. Work on your mantis 20 arms. Thank hey, you. Well, you should do 21 arms. Why not? Why not? I'll do 400. Okay. Let's go ahead. It. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Huh? So I'm going to move these out of the way. These are the thumbnails that I started with before the stream. But like I said, I'm going to let this drawing kind of grow organically. And we'll also have a conversation while we're not only talking about Gen Con and being an artist, but also uh, these creatures and what we can make the backstory of this creature that I want to build with you guys. And the main reason, if you guys heard me mention it before, is because I went to a booth called Kingdom Death. And it's a board game, but their creature designs are probably my favorite that I've seen in a really long time. I think their girl, um, their female warriors are probably the worst I've seen in a long time, but in terms of their creatures, if you guys can see, it probably will be kind of hard to see this. But this creature, that I wanted to buy it. I would have bought it on the spot, but this says I have to wait two more years, which I kind of looked at them like, okay, yeah, you're showing this, but I have to wait two years. Okay, okay, yeah, okay but I love it, so I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> uh, you, you can't really see it, but there's like tons of arms on the underbelly, and then it's a cavity in his giant chest that's actually a mouth that belongs to a face that's an old man in the underbelly. All the hooves are actually hands that are holding the hooves, and uh, if you look at the mouth, you can see arms that are holding mouth open too. So it's all of these little nice surprises that as you're looking around the creature, you keep finding more and more to look at. And then even, where was the, the human ball? So there was a figure, mind you, these are all really small. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. Thank you. So this figure is like that big in real life. It's really small, but it has just a ton of human bodies and it's being held up by this creature on the bottom that has a double jaw, if you can see that. So that one was really cool. And here was like a an insect type queen. That one was really cool. And this was Melina's favorite, Void Bug on Instagram. It's like a lion, but it has like a face that like ripples all the way around and behind. So it's just really weird, interesting design. And that's what excites me more than anything when I see a new piece of art is something that feels fresh, something that hasn't been developed yet and is new and fun so that's kind of where the inspiration behind the piece goes today we're gonna just see where it goes you can see even my thumbnails i'm not really too specific so if you guys have cool ideas i'm definitely willing to incorporate it i think that's what my streams are for going to be for the month of august is we're going to work on this creature together and wherever it ends at the end of august is i guess where we're going to keep it i will say I think I'm going to grab a ruler, though, and just give us a straight line to work with. And everything off of that will just be this organic mess of a creature. But to start off, I want that nice, clean line. And that will kind of act as the base for everything else to sit on. So let me go ahead and grab a ruler really, really, really quick. All right, and as I'm drawing the straight line, let me go ahead and answer a couple questions here. Oh, thank you, guys. Hey, Sammy says she got her ticket for NYCC, and she's super psyched. I am equally excited to go to New York Comic Con. I feel like it's going to be overwhelming, kind of like this con was. But I'm learning to like embrace the chaos, in a sense. Kind of like Overcooked 2, which came out yesterday. If you haven't played it, you definitely should. My favorite game of the year. <laughs> uh, yes, Fraternal Twins. Yes, Andrew. Me and Key are Fraternal Twins. Most people don't know that. Um, 
Digital says, I love that t-shirt. It looks like it should be 10. I know, that's why I bought it. I bought it at a con in Colorado. It's just like, tough guy, but he's actually crying a little bit. I'm like, oh, that's me, when I was more sensitive. And please, if you have a question, put at Von Art before your comment or question. That's what's, it's easier for me to see it as I'm scrolling, because it's just me today, so I got to work kind of double time to make this happen. Uh, Sammy says, just followed Key, and I believe I was her 900th follower. I love her work. She's amazing. Uh, Marie says, speaking of cons, I'm applying ones for next year. Did you go to Denver Comic Con before? I'm trying to decide if I should apply for it. I've never traveled that far for a con before, so I'm undecided. Yeah, we went this year, and I thought it was really good. Um, in terms of like financial gain, I would put it somewhere in the medium area. So yeah, I would say it was worth it. And like the people that went to Denver, I would say made it a hundred times more worth it. Um, that's where I met Slop Jockery, and he's an amazing artist. Uh, it's like I know their Instagram handles. I'm thinking of like uh, Van Van, but I know her name's, I think it's actually Vanessa. <laughs> but I think that's what happens when, in the art world. Is you get so comfortable with people's tag names that you forget that they have real names that you can call them by. So you end up like calling a lot of people by their, their handle, kind of like Key. Everyone calls her Gawky that doesn't really know her. And that's how I can always tell if someone knows Key or not, is if they call her Gawky. But yes, I think it's worth it. Um, Arya says, oh man, I love the artist that does those designs. I forgot their name, but I adore their work. I could not agree more. It's amazing work. Um, Ferris Moss says, maybe the two years will give you the time you need to save up for that thing. <laughs> right? Um, Kazar says, hey, I'm a big fan of your art on Instagram. I was wondering how do you construct your faces? Uh, usually reference images help. I always tell my students when I worked at CG Cookie that you are your own best walking reference, so use yourself. Take a picture of yourself in the pose that you need and then edit it to fit the concept that you're looking for. So even like right now, here, you know what, we'll do it right now. I'm going to take a picture of my hands holding a pole because that's what I need for this concept here. Let's see, what can I use in this room? I'm gonna grab All right. I don't know why I have this metal lead pipe in the basement. Apparently I wanna play an oversized game of Clue. Let me go ahead and put it in position. So I'm going to look at my camera that's on my phone, look at the reference, then since I want to see more of the arm, I'll do the timer. And mind you, I do this all the time, so I, I encourage artists to do this. All right. Okay. So that was the picture. I can show it to you on here. You can see that those are the arms that we're looking for. Oop. I just I like seeing the different tendons and muscles shown. I really am a fan of arms that look like arms, that don't just look like a carbon copy superhero version of what an arm is. I like the ones that have a little bit more of those odysseys that may seem unattractive to most people, but to me, I think, oh, what a fun thing to draw. Even like the different muscles down here or the veins and tendons here, I just see that as such a joy to, to draw. You know what, I'm gonna move this to this screen over here. Oh, that makes it way easier. Okay. So then if this is the pole, I'll work a little faster because I know some of you guys, I always tell people, you know, be careful with your foundation because you don't want to render something that's unproportional or slightly off. So I'm going to do my best to kind of edge it out first.
Do, do, do. Hey, girl Sean says, hey, good seeing you at Gen Con. It was great seeing you. Honestly, this whole experience with Gen Con was just like a family reunion. And I'll talk a little bit more about Gen Con before I get into the creature. Because I do want, like, I'm not kidding when I say, like, let's build this together and let's build a backstory. So I think that would be a lot of fun to do on Twitch for the month of August. And, like, yeah, I might do some edits in between the streams and, like, maybe render out areas that are really boring and monotonous to, to render out. But for the most part, I want us to build it together. And I'm working with a 2H pencil right now. I'm keeping it really light. I'm not trying to have any of these really harsh lines anywhere. What to do? Spongy says, which B documentary did you end up watching? Um, my boy recommended uh, the B movie, and I was like, well, not quite what I meant. Um, but I have a few saved up in my queue. I haven't watched any besides, I think it was like called More Than Honey. That was the only one that I, I started watching so far. Um, but yeah, I have a, a drawing that I'm doing for Drawtober. I can't say exactly what yet because I want it to be somewhat of a surprise. But just expect something with bees. That's all I'm going to say. You know what? I don't want to get too detailed on this hand yet. I want to make sure that I'm kind of focusing on a few of the hands. So I'm going to like lightly sketch out where I want all of the hands first. Liza says, whereabouts in Wisconsin are you from? I have a lot of friends from around there. I live with uh, my other roommates who are also artists, Tyler Johnson, Sketch Geek Online, Sean Price, Art of Price, and Gawky Key in Waukesha, Wisconsin, which is about a half hour w uh, west of Milwaukee. It's becoming slowly more and more like an art hub. I love it. All right, see how we incorporated those two arms? And we still have this imaginary one in front. Because I think it's good to kind of build from both reference and from your head. That way you're not just solely relying on reference. I think it's good to use reference because then you get better proportions and um, end results. But I think it's good to also test yourself, see if you can actually do it without reference. All right, let me do another photo. And literally, I mean, I'm doing it kind of quick for the stream, but I will do this process for a lot of the drawings that I do. Where's that pole? Okay, so then this one, I need more arms like in the center. So I'm gonna hold it a little weird so I can kind of get different shots. I need to get my arms again. So the same thing. See how the photo turned out, and we'll keep building it down. I guess in a lot of ways this is like a an arm stream, <laughs> unintentional arm stream, how to draw arms with Tim. But we're gonna keep creating a lot of them here, and I want this creature to just kind of build, or at least the story to build on itself. I love the idea that it is like either a gatekeeper or some kind of protector. Let's do something more ethereal, or something even like borderline macabre. You can't quite tell if this is spooky or if this is angelic. I kind of like playing that fine line between the two. Um, let me get some questions here. Uh, Maria says, how long does it take to set up your booth for cons? And they always look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, about two hours, roughly. I mean, I have an assistant now, so that helps quite a bit. Um, Adrianic says, or actually, I believe you are on our list. 
Adrian says, hi, how was Gen Con? Amazing. I kept telling people that when they would ask, come up to my booth and like, hey, I, or I always kind of started off with, hey, how's it going? People were always like, yeah, pretty good, blah, blah, how are you doing? And I'm like, amazing. And they're always like surprised that I'm so boisterous about how good of a mood I'm in. But I just, I love Gen Con that much. I want to be like, yes, I'm having an amazing time right now. Oh, this is going to be a fun hand. See how it's like wrapping around the pole here? I almost could have made the pole bigger. I probably will end up doing that just to accommodate the fingers wrapping around more. It almost feels too fragile, and I don't know if that's the look I necessarily want to go for this one. Um, Sean says, Girl Sean says, also congrats on winning Jurist Choice, so proud of you. Thanks. Aw, I appreciate that. It's one of those things where, um, and I'm going to be real with you guys for a second. You start to realize the more success that you kind of achieved throughout your art career, you kind of assume that everyone would be congratulatory in some way. But then you also start to realize that there's a lot of people that will not give you that, like, good job, that pat on the back, that, hey, keep going. And oftentimes you would just assume from, like, people like your family or your some of your friends that it would just be almost expected. But I've learned that it's actually, not only is it not going to happen with a lot of them, but you can't expect people to be proud of you Um all the time and the ones that congratulate you and the ones that are like all about you succeeding and moving forward in your career those are the ones you're going to want to keep close and I feel like I've done a good job at figuring out who are the friends that I have because they actually are happy for the goals that I'm hitting and then there's ones that I think were just friends with me because they wanted to get something and it's it's heartbreaking in some ways because I, I think I am very naive in a lot of uh, life and I think I, I trust people too much and that's probably me being from Wisconsin. But it's hard when, you know, you think that you will have friends that will be there for you and they kind of turn out not to be. And that used to get me down a lot more, but now that I'm older and I'm a lot more thicker skinned, I just, I don't care. And I think that's something that I doubt many of you are probably, you know, feeling right now in your life, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but I'm just letting you know the more that you are reliant on yourself and you congratulate yourself in a way that feels um, rewarding, I think that's what you should look forward to more rather than receiving outside validation. Do, do, do. Um, Fem says, have you ever seen the Weta sculptures? Oh yeah, from the scale of war exhibit, the detail is stunning. Ex yep. And that's why I'm always curious to do more and more of kind of this over-the-top work. I feel like I sometimes put myself in this realm of I'm only allowed to do drawings that I can finish in one night. And I got I to gotta break that habit, honestly. I like drawings that take me a long time. I like drawings that feel like they have a lot of my heart and soul in them. And then when I finish... I can show it and be really proud of how much time and effort that I spent on it. And I think I, I've been called out for being such a slow artist over the years that I think I try to like make myself faster, which is good. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think it is good to try to speed up your process. But you should also be aware that uh, if you enjoy doing these kind of bigger elaborate drawings, oftentimes they require more time. And I'm okay with giving my time now to these bigger drawings. Because the payoff is astounding. I mean, if you look at my friend uh, Pui Che, Pui Illustrated Online, he does these very elaborate, very time-consuming pieces. But when he's done, I mean, they're magnificent. And uh, he reaps the benefits from them, at, especially at, like, conventions, because people are blown away by the amount of detail and uh, effort 
that goes into these larger scale drawings. I'm going to move my camera up even more here. I want you guys to be able to see the whole image. So I think it would be cool if we had like the creature looming up here somewhere, you know, if like the head. And I'm okay with it uh, touching the edge of the paper. I almost feel like I need to have more drawings that come right up to the edge of the paper. Give it some kind of a cool headdress. I'm not sure of what yet, but. And even like the hands, even though I'm placing them all right now in the drawing, I feel like we're gonna edit them. We're gonna make them a little creepier as we go. But I think having a base of these realistic hands will give me some good foundation to play from. But once again, let's go ahead and add in some more arms. Once again, set up my little camera. Take a photo. Okay, I think this one I'm going to have ones that maybe one's holding the pole, and then one's like out here. There we go. I almost want to just kind of prove that, oops, Oh yeah, that works. Um, oh, you know what? Let me do it the opposite way. My phone does a weird thing when I take a picture, it mirrors it. I don't know if that ever happens with you guys. So I gotta do the opposite. Is that just like an iPhone thing? Do I just not know how to use it correctly? Yeah, much better. See, look how fun this hand is. It's kind of weird, but I, I like playing with some weird hands here. We can have more inner lacing, so like this one will be in front of this arm. Because I think that's another problem I have is I don't put things in front of other objects enough. And it's a shame because that's where you can get a lot of fun contrast in your drawings, but it's almost like I want everything to get their own voice and to do that I have to space it out evenly. This one feels fun. While I'm doing this, um, Ferris Moss says, Tim, you mentioned that if we could call it, uh, something different, then we should say so if you want. I'd love to call you by my name, Rain. Oh, your name's Rain? Oh, that's actually really cool. I've never heard that before. But yeah, I will do that from now on. Um, what sort of pencil are you working on? I'm working with a 2H Kimberly General Pencil. Doo -doo -doo. I've learned, and it's sad because I was such a person to fight for mechanical pencils, and I feel like I don't use them as much anymore, just because I understand now why there is the structure of working from light to dark with the different values. You can still do it with mechanical, so do not think that like this is me saying mechanical pencils are worse. I do not believe that. I got through pretty much most of my career with almost primarily using mechanical pencils. To, so don't think that you have to use traditional to be successful. I'm just using them now because I need to work faster. And oftentimes a larger tip will allow me to do that. And with a mechanical pencil, while it's amazing for precision, it's really time consuming for... Um, efficiency. So I've definitely learned to utilize both. So I'll still use a mechanical pencil at the end, but it's usually for detailing. We're doing these larger areas. 
I'm working primarily to create, actually maybe we won't even work on the face today. I'm just gonna work on the hands. Um, but yeah, I work primarily to create a foundation for myself to detail upon. And using traditional pencils kind of forces me not to move too soon into rendering. Because I'm sure a lot of you, if you've come to my stream before, as you know that that's a problem that I have. I oftentimes render too early. What's my other hand doing? Okay, I kind of hate this hand. I don't know if you see, <laughs> my pinky looks broken, but you know what, let's just add that in. Let's add it up here. So like, I guess um, going on like a concept page here, I'm trying to think of like what would what kind of a creature with just a bunch of hands like what kind of task would he be given and i love the idea of him being some kind of a, a gatekeeper i just i don't have any like solid ideas yet so i'm kind of hoping that maybe one of you guys will have this like really cool concept that we can play with And I kind of want to turn my Twitch streams, I've been thinking about it this weekend, what do I want my Twitch streams to turn into? And every now and then I'll still have Sean on and we'll talk and like the other roommates and it'll be fun. But I think a lot of the times, I think I'm just going to be working on like a new concept and do it live with you guys. I kind of like the idea of it growing organically and not having this preconceived notion of what I want the end result to be. Because I think that'll get me drawing more, and in some ways, that'll get me to create new and exciting things that I wouldn't have thought of or done before, if not for these Twitch streams. Um, Sharthless says, if you really want to go for 100 arms, could give it a wings made of arms. Oh, that'd be cool. Like, imagine if they were all, like, flared out in the direction that they need to go. Maybe one day I will do that, honestly. Maybe like a stream session where every Wednesday in a different month, it's all I'll do. I'll do like an arm. Or how cool would it be if when I start off my streams, maybe next year, like the first 15 minutes is I just draw an arm. And at the end of the year, uh, I'll have to do some arms outside of the Twitch streams too. But I could definitely hit 100 arms in a drawing if I did like one every stream to start off with. Do you guys like that idea? I don't know. I'm kind of letting my streams grow organically here. But I love the ideas of not only me drawing, but also you guys, if you're artists, um, drawing alongside me. Sometimes I think as artists, we enjoy drawing with others. And especially for me, it's kind of nice where we, I could just listen in a lot of ways. I feel like when I'm with my friends and I'm drawing, a lot of times I'm just listening to the conversation. I'm not like adding a lot, but I'm, I'm just listening. Okay, we're going to keep moving down the pole and adding more arms. Uh, let me answer one more question. Uh, Mighton says, Sharon, Sharon, the boatman for the river sticks, but huge, like Victor or Pete Morbach, or all the arms hold paddles that all push the boats at once. Oh. Oh. That's an interesting idea. Imagine if, like, or what if each creature has just one oar, and that's the only thing that's, like, their job is to push the boat and each of these creatures have like 20 arms. That would be so interesting. Let's play with that. I kind of like that idea. I like it being an oar. Yeah, let's play with that. All right, I'm gonna get another photo of the arms though here. Okay, so this one I'm gonna have maybe one that's a bit lower. There we go. Do, do, do. Uh, Girl Sean says, hugs. I'm sorry that there are people in your life that have let you down like that. Glad it's not so hard anymore, but that stinks either way. You know, I, at first I used to be kind of sad and down by it, but now I've realized that the people that I've kept in my life and the ones that have stayed with me are the ones that truly support me and want to see me succeed. So in a weird way, it was like filtering out people that were more uh, leeches. And it's actually not, this isn't like a recent thing either. It's been like a while, while, while where I really felt people were not happy for me. 
feel like most of the friends that I've met in the past like three, four years even, um, most of them have just been very encouraging and inspiring and I feel like we feed off each other's energies and it's just a good symbiotic relationship. Okay, I love this arm, so I'm definitely gonna include that one here. Well, I thank you, Bajan Bajorn, for following. Oh, sorry. Got the hiccups for a second. Let's see, I want this arm. I try to avoid tangents, and I know with like a drawing like this, it's gonna be a little more difficult, but we can do it. <laughs> I believe in our ability to see the tangent before it begins. Uh, Adrian says, are you excited or nervous for Otakon? I haven't even been thinking about it. Honestly, Otakon's this upcoming weekend in Washington, D.C., but I am so focused on these other projects that, to me, it's just like another weekend out in a different city that I don't even know where. Even like Gen Con, I think that's why I was so underhyped is because I have so much going on here that it's hard for me to even focus on a con that was as big as Gen Con, and I really should have invested more time uh, developing new prints. I mean, I did, I finally made canvas prints, which I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram, but that was definitely very new for me. And that was exciting to uh, display for the first time. And those all had my gold leaf. And I felt like they helped raise the perception of my booth. And for having a primarily grayscale booth, I feel like it was almost borderline necessary um, for some of these shows. I have a lot of people still ask me like, when are you going to finish this? Or this would be great if it was in color. Like, it's these kind of, like, backhanded insults that are pretending to be compliments, but they're definitely not. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, they're not finished. Like, or, no, they are finished, and I'm, I don't ever plan on coloring them, and blah, blah, blah. But I feel like adding the gold leaf, I didn't get a, that question once. I feel like people just, oh, they get it. Like, oh, this is grayscale, and this is also a form of medium that people can express themselves in visually and <laughs> I don't know it was like a weird battle that I was fighting for a long time but now I think that I've become more um, present at these shows and at cons I feel like it becomes less and less that I have to explain myself of why they're grayscale and why I'm not going to add color to them oh yeah that's a fun arm that's going to be really fun to uh, shade in why, thank you, Suzune, for following. Even this pinky out here. Actually, I'm not going to overly bend it. It's not overly bent in the drawing. Why overly bend it? Or in the reference, why overly bend it in the drawing? I often feel like my hands and fingers have to have, like, this anime look to them when I draw them sometimes, where they have to be, like, bent or, like, creepy or um, not super static looking. But oftentimes, the most uninteresting hands can be the most realistic looking hands. So I try not to overdo them too much. Um, Fem says, I think it would be cool if the face is just made up of hands holding up and covering different heads. Wait, I think it would be cool if the face is made up of hands holding and covering different heads. Oh, what if like the main head was held up by hands? Oh, what if it doesn't actually have a head? Hmm, what if it's like it found this broken mask on the floor or if it was like a ruin and it's using it as like its way to give a visual personification of someone, but it's just this creature that's using it almost as a facade for a real um, human or whatever the mask would be. That's kind of a cool idea. I like that. Okay, the other hand, I'm actually going to pull way back up here. We'll zoom out again for you guys. And I think the other thing about doing this live on Twitch is I'm having fun, and I hope that you guys kind of have fun with it. Because I feel like for a while I didn't know what to do with Twitch. But I'm finding it again. I'm remembering how much fun it is just to draw which I know sounds really weird, but I'm sure a lot of you guys understand what I mean when I say that. 
But it's like you have to realize that that's why you started drawing in the first place when you were younger or, you know, um, if you're more of a hobbyist, like it's your way to calm down. It's, and I always tell people, I find drawing very therapeutic. That's why I do it. And yeah, I make money from it now, but that doesn't denote the fact that originally it was something that was an escape for me as a kid, as a very shy, weird kind of kid. And, and now that I'm a sh- sh- kind of a weird adult, I'm able to do what I love and not be so shy about it anymore. I feel like I've definitely learned to open up and be more expressive and not, I just, I, guess I don't have a lot of shame anymore in terms of like being embarrassed by, like even coming up with stories for this creature. Like, yeah, let's explore something weird. Like let's go into the storytelling aspect of art. Cause it's, to me, this isn't weird at all. This is like exciting. I'm actually kind of a nerd. I feel like a lot of people don't know this, but I'm kind of a nerd with this kind of stuff. I will definitely have to make this pull very present, or the ore that we're we're having here. Um, Liza says, are you solely a freelance artist or do you need another job to help support you? Actually, not only am I not a freelance artist, I am, or not only am I an independent artist, I'm not a freelance artist either. I literally make all my money um, independently. So in a weird way, I feel like I found personal success because I don't have to rely on others for uh, money in terms of like drawing what they want. It's like I can draw what I want and make money and profit off of that. So it's been surreal. This last year has been surreal because I left my full-time job last November even though I loved it. I love CG Cookie and what they did for me. If any of you are interested in doing like 3D art, especially with Blender, I would go check it out. But for me, I needed to break free and I needed to do something more than what I was doing with uh, CG Cookie. It wasn't that they were bad. It was just I needed to do something more on my own. And they, and they even respected that. That's why I love CG Cookie. Like They respected the fact that I wanted to move on um, for myself and we left on really good terms I'm actually going back in September uh, for a um, retreat that they're planning and we're I'm gonna go play Catan with them because I won the trophy from our last retreat and it's just it's good I like that I left my job on a good note you know what I'm gonna turn off this dryer I don't know why I keep turning it on Um, Shartha says your camera for the stream mirrors too. Oh, oh no, I think I edit that so it doesn't. So like I'm actually drawing it and like this is my left hand. It should be on your guys' left. Hopefully, I think I know what I'm doing, right? (laughs) Okay, my arm's there. Yeah, I love the idea of this being an oar. So maybe by the time it gets down here, it needs to open up. I feel like there definitely needs to be another ore in this drawing. Do you guys think so? Let me th- let me know. Um, Aria says, I shift between fast and slow drawing. Like when I practice or just brain fart sketching, it's fast. But when I want to really concentrate on something, it turns rather slow but satisfying or tragic (laughs) yep i definitely know you on that feeling oh yeah imagine if the creature hold on let me get a picture of this i'm gonna draw it and then we'll see if we're liking it or not 
If not, we'll scrap it. But imagine if the head was held up by like these arms. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I want to see the arms more. Okay. Let me see if you guys like this or not. So imagine if there is some kind of a face. I don't know what that will look like yet. Oh, I actually love this hand. Do you guys see this hand here? Good unexpected hand. And I hope you guys are like listening to background music or something as well, because it's just dead silent here. Because I'm not allowed to have copyrighted music. Although if like I only did Twitch streams on Twitch and like didn't upload them to YouTube, then it almost makes more sense for me to play music. I still have to figure that out though. So if you can imagine this hand, make it a little thinner. And I'm using a mono eraser for a lot of this area too. Some of this weird bicep muscle. See how cool like those shapes can be? So it's like I'm not against drawing muscle in my drawings, but I think oftentimes they get so overblown that it doesn't even look like human anatomy anymore. A weird feeling though this is gonna the headpiece is gonna turn into something more up here then on the other side Let me find a question so you're not just sitting in silence listening here. Um, Pickles, the gatekeeper, says, is there a type of, but type of paper you like using? Um, mixed media. I hate paper that's really thin and like will crumple when you erase or draw on it. So as long as it's not uh, super thin, I'm usually okay with it. I like there to be a little bit of graininess in the paper. Not a lot, but just a little to uh, kind of show more of the texture. And I feel like when I shade it, kind of leaves behind this cool graininess look. Um, Rain says, thank you. Also, did you stop using sticky notes to protect the paper from your hand? Um, I only do that when I'm working with a darker value. Like right now I'm working with a 2H and I'm usually pretty good at about controlling, um, not smudging. Cause even like I'm resting my hand on the hands and it won't smudge cause I, I'm not a very heavy handed artist. So it won't uh, slide a lot of the graphite along the paper here.
Oop, that needs to be bigger. Um, whoop. Uh, Tigel says, a demon hand from hell. Hmm. That'd be interesting, too. Arya says, if he has a lot of hands, he must be good at shaping universes. Oh, what if that's, like, his job? He's, like, stirring up the cosmos. Hmm. Spongy says, if he's got a lot of hands, he's make a, he'd make a good masseuse. I feel like that's going to be the the quote or the joke for this one. If he has a lot of hands, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, Brain says, I feel like he needs a bird head, like a crow or something. Hmm. Oh, like this is actually like a flock of birds that are pretending to be this human figure. That'd be interesting. I'm going to exaggerate this arm here. Ooh, what if we had this arm in front of the pole? No, I kind of like it behind. I almost want like more hands up there somehow. Let me see if I can move this higher for you guys too. I've got quite a large drawing going on. I feel like this is the biggest one I've done on a Twitch stream, at least live. I think I'm gonna get rid of a lot of these human features up there. Hmm. I'm going to give me, I'm going to draw some hands that aren't holding the pole. I feel like I'm making too much of a point to have all these arms holding a pole, but really we should have some arm like coming toward the camera. While I'm doing that, let me look for more questions. Yeah. Uh, Mighton says, maybe related to a spider with a web-inspired gate? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of like that. I still like your idea of the ore keeper, though. Or someone that's, like, on a boat. Yeah, let's see here. Right, let me take a look at those hands. <laughs> I look so uncomfortable in the photo. Let me zoom in then for you guys on this one. It's usually for like the first part of a drawing. It's not the most dark, so it can be hard to see on Twitch. go um, oh you guys have a lot of questions or a lot of suggestions carrying a lot of keys to dark realms one for each key oh I like that I should have one of these hands holding the key oh that's a great idea oh, I like that and like I don't mind if this is gonna be a hodgepodge of a drawing like let's include a lot of elements And if people say it's too much, I think they think too little. Although I'm also very aware that this could get very messy. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend like it won't. I'm gonna use the eraser. See how much that like fills in that space and not having all of them hold it actually kind of adds this cool element. And then this arm. I kind of wanted to cut in front of this one, but I had to do it in a right way. Do 
Because the first hour is already gone. See, when I'm having fun drawing, I feel like time goes really, really fast. like my least favorite hand so far. You know, even though I draw a lot of hands, that doesn't mean each one's going to come out perfect. <laughs> I'll just say that. But a lot of it can be fixed with rendering. But I don't want that to be the reason I sloppily lay down a foundation just because I know I can render the hell out of it. I want to make sure that it has a nice foundation to work upon and I feel strong and confident about what I've laid out before I just start rendering it out. Nope, he would be a sad conveyor belt worker. Oh, that'd be cute too. Just like, that'd be super impressive though. Okay, I need to find a ring so I can have him hold it. will do. I found some metal coil in my basement. So I'm thinking I'll have like one of the arms out just like holding it in front. Once again, turn on the camera. Do it with this arm. Let's see how that one turned out. Oh, I like that. Okay. It's so got our nice hand and ring here. I'm definitely going to be pushing the edge of the paper on this one. I didn't want to work on like too big of a piece of paper because then you guys wouldn't be able to see at all. And I feel like it's already kind of hard to see because of how small the camera size is working with how big of a drawing we're doing here. forward. It's, pe it's funny, people will ask me like, do I get bored of drawing hands? Not really. I think it can be frustrating when you do like a bad hand and you just can't seem to do a good one. I've learned that that'll just not be my day. I feel like some days I'm really good at drawing hands, other days I'm
out. Now, here's the question. Do we do one key or do we do like do a ton of keys? I feel like I already know the answer in my head. A ton of keys. I think one would be more symbolic and more iconic in a lot of ways, but I feel like having just a ton will bring just a different level of complexity to an already complex drawing. I don't know though. Is it a nice balance of like all these arms and just being over the top and then just like a single key that this creature is holding? Actually, I don't know. Yeah, we'll go we'll come back to that. I don't want to just assume that it's gonna be a lot. Maybe if you guys have any good ideas, I'm definitely willing to hear it out. Um, let me knock out a lot of these suggestions here real quick. Um, Grace, hey Grace, says Bone Guardian guarding the corpse of a fallen king. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. Uh, Shartha says, I, of course, love that idea of you drawing 100 arms every now and then draw one. Yeah, I think we should do that. Girl Sean says, working on whatever sounds wonderful. I'm going to be doing that on my stream to keep me more productive. Exactly. That's kind of why I'm doing this today. Uh, Lopez says, I think you'll probably draw more than eight arms, but I'm thinking of an anarchid person with multiple eyes and things. I can't say why I'm trying to avoid insectoid-looking creature because there's something I'm doing in Drawtober. If you guys don't know what that is, it's a daily drawing challenge held by myself in Key, and there's a, a day specifically that I'm going to be doing something kind of fun with that. Um, Liza says, did did I answer the phone setup question? I don't know which one you're talking about. Could you ask it again? Sorry. Um, Bajan Bajorn says, how do you like the idea of a, being a nature spirit, perhaps playing a flute? The creature itself is made of branches and twigs and is home to woodland animals. I love that idea, but uh, I did a piccolo player a couple years ago. Actually, rather than talk about it, just show it. Uh, let's see here. And the pickle, piccolo player was actually one of my favorite drawings that I've ever done because it kind of just started on a whim. It's this guy. So he also has multiple arms, but he's you can see he has like this flute that he's holding. And I'm kind of doing something a little bigger, but a slightly different idea, and I like that. Um, Fem says, or can play different instruments with his arms and can be a one-man band for the animals. Oh, that's cute. Arya says, the whole is it finished and are you going to color that thing with pencil works really bothers me. I'm so glad that more artists are putting graphite work out there as fine art because I hope it will help change some of those silly perceptions. I agree. No kidding. Um, do I chew on my pencils? I do not, surprisingly. Let's see, though. I don't want to just be arms. I want to include fur or something of some kind. You can see in my thumbnail I have, like, kind of a fancier Final Fantasy head and shoulder dress. So maybe let me try incorporating that a touch here. Um, Aria says... What if it's like the monster Pan's Labyrinth where with eyes on its hands? I could do that, but I feel like it's such a obvious nod to it, you know? Where I feel like when I see other people do it now, it's just kind of like, oh, it's Pan. Like it almost gets, it almost feels derivative sometimes. And I don't ever want to feel like I'm ripping off of Pan's Labyrinth because I think those creature designs are like excellent. So as much as I'm inspired by them, I try not to mimic them too much. Especially like Pan. I love Pan's eye and horn combination. I think it's like the most beautiful creature design I've ever seen. But I don't want to ever draw something that's too similar to it, you know? Tishel says, what about two hands that are intertwined as the two people connecting? Oh, I should have two hands that are actually touching somewhere. Hmm, I like your idea. I just gotta incorporate it somewhere. Because, I mean, the whole drawing could just be all arms. I mean, it could just be some almost abstract interpretation of what we're trying to achieve here. Let me go ahead.
I'm getting so much more comfortable with this drawing of letting it go off the page. You can see like where the page stops. If this creature has these giant horns of some kind, I'm okay with them just being off the page. Because even, like, even though we got some realistic hand outlines going on, I'll probably make them more creature-like in the end. Um, imagine if we had this Easter egg where only you guys would really know about it. But do you kind of see the face that's building in this drawing right now? Where if these were the nostrils and like these were the eyes and like this was the mouth. That could be like one of our hidden little secrets that only we know about. I like there'd be some kind of fur included as well. I feel like I've had such a fun time drawing fur recently. Why, like, why not? Why not get this creature fur? But I feel like this empty pocket here needs some arms. So let's go ahead and go back to our photo board, draw some arms. I've definitely noticed that like when I'm less focused on how perfect it looks, I move really fast. So I think that's why this drawing is moving as quick as it is because I'm not so focused on it. Oops, forgot to turn the timer off, or turn the timer on. Okay, let's see. Let's see how that one looks. I think it's good for me to also do this live so you can see how easy it is just take a picture of yourself, the hand position you need, and then just work it in. Like I kind of like how long that arm is, but I also borderline don't like it. Hmm. <laughs> nope. I don't like it. Too long. I think if I have all these sizes of arms, it'll take it to a new place, which isn't bad. I just don't want that for this drawing. Oops, <laughs> I get so caught up in a drawing sometimes I forget that I'm streaming. That I should be talking. There we go. Um, okay, let me look at the questions again. Uh, Spongy says, I hope I can learn to be less shy and nervous when meeting new people. 
two and a half decades on this planet and I still cry when meeting new people. You will. I, I have full faith in you, Sponge. And like, the more that you do it, the more that you kind of gain the self-confidence and you don't know exactly why, but I think it's because it almost becomes like a job. And meeting people then becomes part of the, the job. So you don't think of it so much as like, oh, I wonder if they'll like me, blah, blah, blah. It becomes more of like, oh, they already like my art. They're curious to hear more about that. And then it's, I feel like as artists, it's easier to talk about our art than it is ourselves a lot of the time. So just keep that in mind. Maybe that'll help you. Okay, then I'm going to have this other arm. And this camera does not capture everything it needs to for this drawing. Drawing's is too big. Drawing is too big, I say. Uh, I don't know if I like that secondary arm. Hmm. Hmm. I do want to think about this composition as a whole. Sometimes when I work so quickly, I'm not seeing the whole composition here. Yeah, actually, I don't think I'm crazy about these horns. I feel like they're such a weird addition, at least right now. It just doesn't fit in. I mean, there's one part of me that's like, why don't we just fill the entire page with arms? But I'm like, ah, is that too much? I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas? I feel like I'm stuck at this point right now. Um, Dina says maybe some hands could have six or even more fingers or just four or some pieces just got cut off. Ooh, that's a good idea. Uh, Mighton says more, more. Sijo says, the holding of the head felt a bit too symmetrical for me. I would keep the right one, but put the left hand lower down, like supporting the chin area. Just an idea. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Or that's why I'm saying, like, should I have, like, six arms holding up this mask? You know, I guess I really should put more of a... So I guess the type of mask is also very important that it's going to be wearing. Like, is it going to be like this found cracked mask? It's going to be a spooky ethereal mask. Yeah, I think I agree with you, Tijel. Let's have a couple more like holding it up underneath. And also, I think these two circles, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of them right now. Oh, what if, like, from the chest cavity, I have a bunch of these hand, like. Look, let me let me do a quick sketch so you guys can see what I'm kind of seeing in my head right now. You know what I mean? Is that too complicated? <gasps> oh, 
oh, what if we threw in like giant hands? Wait, I got an idea. Let me, let's experiment right now. I'm gonna erase this arm. I kind of like the idea of like a massive hand down here. And like an even more than like the same size hand up here. You guys like that? Does that look something? Does that look kind of cool? And I kind of almost like them severed, so they're not even like fully connected to the body. I don't know. Or do we pull them into the body? Hmm. -mm. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Um, Smoochie says, I'm painting and listening to you. Sing for us. I'm blue daba dee daba die. Daba dee daba die. Daba dee daba die. Thank you. Fem says, hearing the crickets because it's really dark outside and I live in the countryside. Oh, that's kind of cute. And you're watching Twitch and listening to the outside atmospheric nature sounds um curl sean says there's uncopyrighted music on youtube and soundcloud that you can search for some artists release it for free it's time consuming to hunt them down though oh you know what maybe i will do that that way i could put it on youtube no problem um tommy says did you sell originals at gen con today read that right was that your first time you've done that um no i've sold originals at cons before but it was uh not as heavy handed as it was at this show like i really made it a point to include I think it was like like 60 originals that I, I had with me. And yeah, I think I sold like eight of them. It was great. They really helped. Uh, I, I broke my record for a con for um, gross uh, profit. So yeah, it was really cool. Uh, West O'Paint says, hey, it was great meeting you at Gen Con. Hey, how are you doing? Do you find that digital artists bring in smaller numbers due to their inability to sell originals? Do you have a sense of that? Um, No. Uh, cause when you think about it, Pete Morbacher does primarily digital, Pui does all digital, my, uh, Key Kwaki does all digital and I know their numbers cause we share it with each other and they do, they do fine. <laughs> I don't think that should be like a detraction for whether or not you do digital versus, uh, traditional. Not one bit actually. <laughs> They're doing fine. Uh, Spongy says, this makes me think a lot of Doug Jones and the amount of just a collation he's known for his characters i know i mispronounced that but yes i know who you're talking about and yeah i like the way that he moves he knows his body really well and he's like really able to um, put the gesture in it oh man i'm really behind on comments i'm sorry jim says insert a new piece how do you battle proportions of the subject knowing where the edges of the paper are if that makes sense normally i'm like hyper aware of it but i think with this drawing i'm kind of letting it just grow organically and I almost challenge you to allow yourself to do that and just see where it takes you. Because even with this drawing, I love how it's going. But yeah, there will definitely be times where I'm frustrated with it. I, but I think that's all part of the process. So I, I don't allow myself to get too bogged down by it. Because I think great art grows organically. And you, you almost have to allow yourself to be put in that position where it can grow organically. Um, Groshaw says, a key for every arm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. If we did a key for every arm, that would be interesting. Like, what would the story be behind that? Like, do I put little keyholes on the top of each hand? 
Like, what does that symbolize to us? I mean, I, I like the idea. Because like I said, I'm this drawing, this is going to sound awful, but I think you guys will understand. This drawing means nothing to me, and at the same time, it means everything. So like, I'm okay with it going in all these weird different directions because I'm not committed to any idea beforehand. So that's why in a weird way it means nothing, but it means everything because I'm allowing myself to play with these different ideas. So yeah, I kind of like the idea of there being a key for every hand, but then we got to make sure it makes sense. I don't like things thrown in for no particular reason. So if we can't think of a story behind the keyhole for every hand, I'm going to get rid of them because I think having symbology in your work when there's nothing behind it, it it's such a dry... I don't know. I, I just like it a lot. And I hate when I see artists throw in symbols for the composition, but the symbols mean nothing. And it's like, well, if you're going to throw a symbol in, it might as well mean something and add value to the piece rather than it just being aesthetically pleasing, you know? Um, okay, wait. Before I answer more questions, let me, let me take a picture of the two really strong hands so that I can start detailing those. Because we have about a half hour left on the stream and I wanna make sure at least I can get those in. Okay, put my camera back on. Okay, this one is ultra important. Most need like, this one. I'm going to take, er, actually, that might, might have done it. Hold on. Oh, no, that was actually perfect. Holy crap. I, I don't know, sometimes when you take a reference photo and you're like, yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. Like, look at that. I like the knuckles on, and you can see each individual one. That was surprising. I was not expecting the first picture of a reference to turn out that well. I feel like the stream has been weird in general because usually I take like a few different reference shots. But actually the pictures have been turning out pretty much how I wanted them to on the first try. Yep. I need more room for the hand. Oh, let me answer more questions while this is going. Um, maybe it can hold different valuables. It's like a thief. Hmm. Oh, and like you have to, when you unlock the hand, oh my God, when you unlock or when you have the key for the hand, you get all the treasure that that hand has ever stolen. Hmm. See, now we're getting somewhere. This is like a thief. Oh, I like that. God, you guys are awesome. Um, Mighton says that makes me think of him holding all the precious items to be collected as a toll for crossing the river. Oh, <gasps> yes. And like whenever someone grabs Oh my God, I got to write this down before I forget though. Or you know what? It's recorded. Don't need to. <laughs> I love that idea though. And if like you take the key and you unlock the right hand, all the possessions that that hand held are now yours. Oh my God, you guys are so good. See, I knew, I just knew I had a, I had a good hunch this morning. I'm like, you know what? I want to build a drawing with um, the Twitch watchers today. I just had that hunch. I feel like the hunch was the right one.
Ooh, this arm's looking hella loopy. Let me move. We'll do this arm first. Sometimes if I'm like way off with the drawing, I'll be like, I'll come back to it. Um, Mr. E 1984 says, speaking of Drawtober, when are you planning on sharing out that calendar? At the September 1st. So expect the Drawtober calendar then. And for those of you who've been wasting, waiting ever so patiently for um, the Drawtober pin, if you're international, because we sent all the local ones out, we are we actually scheduled a date for, we're going to hire a bunch of people. I mentioned it on a stream before, but this is way too much for what we have going on this summer for me and Key to do it by ourselves. And we, we literally just have to hire people to do it um, for us. So we haven't forgotten about you. We promise it's coming. We're going to keep true to our ward. Something ward. We're going to keep true to our ward and send those out for you before we start doing all this new Drawtober stuff. Cause let me tell you, I am excited. We even have a draw Tober booth at Yomacon this year. That Deandra will be in charge of. All right, this hand feels way better than the one I was doing down there. Oop, I don't want to get into shading. Like, I want to shade it so bad, but I'm like, I'll save it for next week's Twitch. So yeah, if you guys want to see this creature continue to grow, I may start shading it next week. It kind of depends on where we're at when we finish today, and then also uh, if I have time to kind of clean up some of the edges before the Twitch stream next week. Because there's a good chance I probably won't, because... With Otakon around the corner, I won't be here all weekend. We'll see, though. I'll keep you guys in the loop. Oops. Um, Liza says, my bad. It's the phone question regarding how do you set up your camera so that you are able to take full portraits of yourself for reference photos without having someone else to take it for you? Basically go to camera, I turn on the 10 second option, photo, and then you do it, and then it'll count down from 10 to zero, and it'll take the photo. Um, let me catch up here. Fem says, it can be like a person's hopes. Maybe there are different arms reaching out to a heart for love, the key for freedom, coins for wealth, etc. but most are toward the pole for stability. Whoo! Look at you, oh my God. I'm gonna make a new note and save some of these. Honestly, these are great. Femme, thank you. You know what? I'm going to save, I think it was Mighton that said, yep, I'm going to save that one. You guys are fantastic. Holy crap. Um, Sean said, Girl Sean says, maybe more key chain hands might comp complement the symmetry of the hands around the head. Oh, that's true. It's like the only two, maybe those are the only two that don't have keyholes. What does that mean? Like, there's a, there's a curveball. What if the mask was different pieces of skulls that it's found? Ooh. I'm going to copy that one, too. Hmm. 
Fem says maybe the creature is hold up by a giant hand from another creature. Oh, that's interesting. If there's like something actually behind this creature that's holding it all together. Hmm. Arya says, what happened to the plants in the pipes? Oh, those are gone. <laughs> We're going to keep that Easter egg to ourselves. Um, Liza says, not sure about YouTube, but this is something my friend recommended to me. It's called Pretzel Rocks. Oh, I will look into that more. Thank you for that. Um, Shartha says, the symbol might be that we all hold the key for our actions. I'm going to save that too. Oh, this is wonderful, guys. Um, Caroline, hey, says, in music, you play in different keys. Hmm. That'd be interesting to explore, too. I feel like maybe not for this drawing, though. Um, Girl Sean says, are you, you are the key to your own doorways. Your potential is there, and you have the power to unlock it if you keep working at it. Unelegantly explained. Yeah, but I kind of like the like idea of what if this creature like stole. Maybe it's not even like physical possessions. Like if someone stole the key to someone's heart, and they're holding it in their hand. Oh, this this can go a lot of ways. I like this. Uh, Spongy says a keyhole for every hand is like all the R's that feel held back because they don't have the singular it vector that they think they need. Mm -hmm. uh, Rain says if you want to go for the galaxy approach, may, perhaps the keys represent different elements used to create the universe. Maybe. I kind of like the idea of it being like a thief. I mean, it could be, still be a universe. It's still like early enough in the stages that we're here that it could go that way. Tommy says, or the hands of fate, weaving a web of strings. I do want to do the fates at some point. The, the Greek, the three of them. I think that would be a really cool drawing. Oh, thank you, Rain. I just want so badly to celebrate every little thing that goes right for you, Tim. You're too nice. Your accidental ward comment makes me think that perhaps this character would be a warden, and the keyholes represent all of this who are locked away for the crimes. Hmm. Um, Spectre 4 says, I see you're using a 2H pencil. Do you push it hard on paper because it's a hard pencil? Nope. I lay it really light. I never push down hard on my drawings because then it would. I like the ability to erase it if necessary at this stage. Um, Jim says, the larger hand is awesome. Okay, so you guys like that. Are all the hands the same being? Like, would you try and toss a, a truly stick-like hand or especially a grotesque fatty arm? I don't know. I'm not opposed to it. Maybe. Um, Tisha says, I've sent you some extra arms on Facebook if you want them. Oh, were you posing with arms? Hold on. For those of you who don't know, Tisha is probably my longest follower. Uh, he's been helping me out in, like, funny ways. And this would definitely be one of them. Oh, these are great. Ooh. I don't even know how I would show this on camera. Yeah, to July, I will use these hands. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. So you guys can't see the ones Tigil just sent me. Actually, Tigil, could you, if you're comfortable with it, could you drop them in the Discord? And for those of you who don't know, we actually have a Discord community kind of centered around the house. So it's like me, Sean, Key, and Tyler. And uh, this summer, obviously, we've been so busy, so it's hard for us to even catch a breath to do our own thing. But that's where I'll post updates about like the live stream. I'll post an image of this when it's done, so you can go join that if you would like. But yes, I am totally going to draw these hands right now, Tigil. Let's see, where do I like the idea of them being, though? Thank you for those, by the way. I think, what, who, this was talking to Kat about you about how um, I'm hoping that you come to the States at some point because we'd love to show you around. Kind of the way that you showed us around Belgium. And me and Kat would be pretty good at that because we're kind of both knuckleheads and fun-loving people. Actually, if any of you guys 
I mean, this is kind of like an open call, I guess. If you have any cool hand positions that, maybe if you give me one, if you guys could send me a hand that is your own, I will include it in this drawing and then that will be like your key. And whenever you look at the drawing, you'll know that that's your hand. And that um, you can even share with me what that would unlock for you. That'd be a cool like little collaboration, maybe. I don't know, I'm, I'm literally shooting off the hip for today's Twitch and I am open to the possibility of like anything happening with this drawing and I like that idea. And whenever I have an idea that I like, I run with it. I found that it's just made me I don't know, a stronger artist I feel in a lot of senses. I like that you're also sporting Sean's t-shirt today. Little shout out for those of you who don't know, Sean actually got partnered with a clothing company who's making t-shirts for him. Oh, can you guys even see what I'm drawing? I'm sorry. Hold on. I just realized this paper's so big. I figured that you guys might not even be able to see the drawing. Oop. Hold on. Lost my hand reference. There we go. I can't see the comments or questions right now because I have this open, but I will answer them in just a second when I finish this hand. Well, I guess in the meantime, I can tell you, um, oh, well, thank you, Monerisms, for following, uh, that I met so many, there are so many quality artists at Gen Con, and honestly, I I want you to check them all out. So on my Instagram, it's literally the drawing, or the post with my awards, the first one, but then if you scroll two to the right, you'll see all the artists that we took a photo with at the very end, and I definitely recommend them. And if you want, there was uh, uh, one of the artists in there, his name is Melvin Chan, he won Best in Show. And I would definitely check out his art too. It's like this perfect mix of kind of campy fun with like uh, fantasy animal elements. He did a good job like marrying the two. And he's just a really nice guy. A lot of Australians at this show I noticed. Or no, sorry, a lot of people outside of the States because the other one I'm thinking of is Canadian, not Australian. And then definitely check out um, uh, Gavin. He won first place for best original art. I think it's Gavin Valentine is his Instagram. And then the other one of them was not in the photo that won Jurors Choice. And who was my personal favorite at the show? Oh, the Gerards. If you guys don't know Annie Steg and Justin Gerard, inform yourselves. <laughs> they're they're incredible. And they're really nice people too. I talked to them for a while about their diet and they're doing like an all carnivore diet, which is like the complete opposite of what I'm doing. So we just had a good discussion about it. And that's the other good thing I love about people like that is where you can have like two completely opposite views and yet it's a discussion. It's not an argument. It doesn't turn into something awful. Like you actually respect one another's choices. And I, I wish more people did that nowadays when it becomes so easy to label someone as like this and then forever they're that. And it sucks because, yeah, they might have one different opinion than you, but that doesn't mean that everything about them is horrible or that like, yeah, of course, I'm vegan, so I'm, I'm the opposite in the way of thinking. But I love the Gerards. I don't think any less of them because of it. It's just a different viewpoint and a different way of living. If it doesn't affect me, I shouldn't be affected. Okay, let me see, huh? Um, 
Ooh. Hold on, I gotta scroll up. I missed a lot here. Fem says, ha, no problem. I don't really have the ability yet to put it on paper, but it's my in my head, so I love to see you try those things. Absolutely. Sammy says, I really love the concept of dreams, memories, dreams and memory. And I read in this book about ossuaries that are basically a place where skulls and bones are stored, but there's a librarian who pulls the memories and dreams from them. And I thought that would be cool concept to illustrate or imagine. Man, you guys have these really cool concepts. I'm so glad that we did this stream together. Phantom September says, what is the name of the game that inspired you to make this piece? Kingdom Death. Kind of like Kingdom Hearts, but Kingdom Death. Um, sad that the female designs are awful, but I'd love to look at the monster designs more. I, You know what? I shouldn't say awful. Personally, I just don't like over-sexualized female warrior characters. And these are just like thin strip um, pieces and articles of clothing that are like covering the nipples and the lower regions. And they're just like super busty and sexual. And I'm just like... For having like these ma male and creature designs that are so robust, powerful, new, and inventive, and then just have these like very cookie cutter female warriors, I was like, come on. Like, I feel like you're playing to a market, and that's not a market I want to be a part of. I, s I can respect it in some regards because it's like, I know there's a market for it. I'm just not appealed to it myself. Um, Fem says, maybe the hand is a representation of something that is holding you down. And once you get the key, you can unlock it and it can't hold you down anymore. Mm. By the way, I'm copy and pasting a lot of these, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Uh, Girl Sean says, oh my gosh, how special. What a great idea to have everyone's hands together. We're all going to feel so connected to this drawing and we'll have the best story if you end up offering this to customers. I would honestly send it to you guys for free. Um, Adrian says, oh yeah, I just bought one of Sean's shirts too. It just got shipped. I'll let him know. Um, Shartha says, I would love to buy stuff from you guys at some point, but the shipping is so expensive from U.S. to Germany. I agree. Don't buy it for me. It, I, I feel bad for European people because the shipping's like $23 on a book right now for me. So wait till I come over there and you can buy it in person. Save some money. Um, Tishel says, sure, which channel should I post them in? Um, could we post them, actually, in the weekly Wednesday streams channel? Or actually, the Wednesday stream clips. Let's post them there. Or how about this? I'll create a new channel really quick. Okay, under the workroom, there's a thing called arms and hands for the drawing. It's pretty specific, but that's where you can post your hand drawings if you want to be included in the drawing. Um, and once again, that's in our Discord. There's a link below. Uh, Jim says, what about a young child's arm contrasted with a withered old wrinkled arm? Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of that, of like incorporating different arms. Dina says, what if he has to lay the hand on his chest to unlock it so the universe or pocket opens up to his chest? Oh, that's interesting. Like, leave something really big up here? Hmm. I like the direction you guys are thinking. Okay. Let's keep going. What I have? Oh, I have five minutes. Oh, my gosh. This, this went so fast. Hold on. All right, let me do one more arm then to finish off. I'll grab another one of Tijel's arms here. He gets to have a few since he's been an avid watcher for years. So, like, do I play favoritism? Absolutely. <laughs> and Tijel's just been such a good helper and... He was an amazing guide when uh, me and my friends went to Belgium. Let's see here. Oh, can you guys see this? I have that horrible habit. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to draw this arm here. I'm going to actually draw two hands to finish off.
And if you can, give me hands if you want to send a photo. Make sure the photo is easy to read, has like a distinguished pose that's like fun. Like these more elegant ones are definitely the ones I'm looking for. So like Tizzle did a great job at creating these arms that kind of have a, a story just in the pose themselves, you know. And Tijal, I, I would like you to let me know what your key would unlock. There's like a little extra thing. I think it would be cool if we all put what would our key unlock. Like what's our greatest treasure? Love drawing hands. Then I almost like, instead of this being an ore, I feel like this pole should be something else. Maybe we'll discuss that next week on the stream but yeah let me answer any last minute questions and then we're gonna go ahead and cut the stream um girl sean says gosh you're so sweet <laughs> thank you uh specter four says i had i heard a trick that you can send your paintings or maybe even books as a ladder so it might get the shipping cost lower oh good to know uh, Aria says, if you bring a key that fits one of the hands and chooses the right one, he will grant you a dark miracle. If he chooses the wrong, he will take an arm and devour half your soul. <gasps> oh, Aria, I love that. I'm going to use that too. Sorry if my, my excitement gets obnoxious. It's hard for me to hide. I'm one of those people that my emotion is literally on my sleeve. Girl Sean says, for international customers, you might want to investigate a European warehouse pick and pack setup, maybe with the other house members to lower the cost of shipping to outside North America. That, that's a great idea. You're right. Okay. I think I'm going to call the stream done. I'll pull the camera up so you can see where we are at. I think maybe I'll post... I'll do like a nice draw, a nice post on the Discord channel of what it looks like right now, but I think I might post on Instagram where it's at. Possibly. We'll see. So here it is. Still not crazy about the face yet. We'll have to figure out what to put up here. Because I don't think I want it to be like perfectly round. I feel like that would be a, a cop out in a lot of ways. But so, we'll think of something though. Yeah, I like how it's going. I definitely want to fit other arms in here though. Maybe even like smaller ones. Because we don't have a lot of page to work with. So I want to make sure that we're utilizing it to the best of our ability. Okay. I think that's all I got for today. I will put this one on YouTube. So if you missed it or you want to rewatch a certain part of it, you can go watch it. On, I'll post it probably next Tuesday. That's hopefully the trend I get into. By next Tuesday, I'll post it on YouTube. So thanks everyone for coming to watch this live stream. I had a blast. So I hope you guys had fun too. And hopefully we'll see you next week. And I think next week I'll cover um, how to shade some of the hands. So the ones that I feel more confident about uh, their position and um, how they look, I'll go ahead and start shading those and you can start to see how we go about doing that. And definitely the story elements. If you guys have any other cool ideas, like bring them up next week. I, I love the idea of building drawings with you guys and have that kind of be my Twitch from now on. So. Yeah, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing the hands that you guys post. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Where's my OBS channel? There it is. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Thanks again.